There are growing concerns over whether recent supply chain issues will impact holiday gift giving. But the bottleneck at many of the nation's ports have sparked a far more dangerous problem. As container ships and trucks sit idling, waiting to offload their Black Friday purchases, toxic fumes fill the air. A recent article in The Verge details the toxic traffic jam and the threat it poses to the environment and our health. So joining me now is the author of that piece, science reporter Justine Kalma. Thank you so much for joining us. Now when I think of Black Friday, I don't think of the sales. I just think of sort of the gray black pollution that is filtering into the air. Um, so let's talk about this. Um, we're we're going to focus on the, on the Port of Los Angeles, which is you focus on uh, in the article. Um, the city and the surrounding areas already had an issue with smog and an issue with air pollution. But now you have these container ships that are sitting there. So to give people a, a sense of you know, what's different now versus before the pandemic, how long are these ships idling there now compared to what they were doing even like earlier this year? Right. Thanks so much for, for having me um, and, and shining a light on this. It's, it's really important because these neighborhoods near ports and warehouses are, are really paying the, the hidden costs um, of e-commerce and holiday shopping. Um, this year, we've seen the wait time uh, that container ships are idling off of the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach um, pretty much double on average. So they're waiting for about 17 days on average uh, near the shore running their auxiliary engines, um, which creates a lot of pollution. And that pollution, you know, it doesn't stay offshore, that drifts inland um, and, and people breathe that in. And that has, you know, that, that has an effect on, on people's daily lives and health. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, the communities in the area bearing, bearing the brunt. Um, I, I want you to explain just how this is impacting communities that are not obviously out at sea, they're the communities on land, how, you know, this, uh, this pollution is being sort of funneled into certain communities and who lives there. Right. Well, I think it's important to understand that this is really an issue that touches all of us. You know, I actually I grew up in um, in one of these impacted regions and also used to live nearby the ports. Um, and so that's why this is an issue that is, um, you know, sort of close to my heart. And I, I bring attention to. Um, but, you know, I'm in New York now and it still affects me because, you know, I'm mm -hmm. I also buy things around the holidays. And honestly, if you have anything in your home that was made in China or somewhere in Asia, there is a very good likelihood that it passed through these ports because this is one of the busiest. Or this is actually yeah. the busiest, busiest port in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, and basically what yeah. happens to the pollution um, which we've seen um, an uptick in, in emissions um, from ships in particular. Um, what what's the California Air Resources Board has documented or uh, estimates is that uh, the daily emissions of uh, particle pollution alone is uh, equivalent to the, the tailpipe emissions of about 100,000 uh, 100, trucks. Um, you also mm. have nitrogen oxides that have increased uh, significantly and that creates smog. Um, and so what happens then is that that pollution, um, it gets trapped in two sort of bowls in, in the topography. One that surrounds the, uh, the ports themselves, the uh, ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. You have, you know, the city of Long Beach is a, a bustling city. Um, I write about how the ports butt up right against the, the west side of Long Beach, which has a big Filipino community, uh, also big Pacific, Pacific Islander community. Of course, Long Beach is also home to uh, a thriving, thriving Cambodia town, um, which is a refugee community. Um, and then you also have uh, strong Latinx, uh, Mexican and, and black communities in Long Beach and neighbor, neighborhoods nearby as well. And then it sort of moves, mm -hmm. it's connected to this other bo uh, bowl further inland, um, to the Inland Empire with, where I grew up. Um, this empire used to be known for, for oranges and some of its agriculture. Now, really, I, I would say it's sort of become an empire of warehouses. Warehouses are now the, the mm. most common commercial building in the U.S., um, more common than office buildings. And that has to do a lot with the shift in, in e-commerce and things being... Um, Basically, once they get off these ships, they're they're sort of immediately sent to these inland um, distribution centers, warehouse um, 
concentrations of warehouses um, where they're sorted and then sent to the rest of the country. But these warehouses are literally in people's backyards. Um, and so uh, it's interesting because you have the ship emissions um, that uh, blow inland and get trapped in both of these bowls, but you also have emissions that are traveling via truck. And so um, you have uh, the, uh, the soot and smog that's coming from these trucks as well. Right, right. I think that you sort of explained it so well, this this combination of all of this um, uh, air pollution being pumped into the same location. Thanks to the topography, certain neighborhoods are getting a concentration. And once again, we're seeing members of the minority community, minority communities, plural, being hit harder than other areas. Um, when the Biden administration announced its plan to keep the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach open 24-7 is what he said. And I totally understand um, why, I, you know, what was the response from the people in the surrounding community? Yeah, that was not a relief at all <laughs> to, to people in the uh -huh. surrounding community. Um, you know, like I mentioned, uh, while the topography is important, that's not the only factor. You also have, um, you have the the proximity of these trucks as well. And so when you have operations going 24 seven, um, that only means that the um, the amount of time that these trucks are spewing, um, you know, spewing pollutants is increasing. And so there was alarm from the medical community, from uh, from residents that now that uh, that this that the ports are open 24 seven and you know, that's to kind of ease the supply chain crisis and, and help out a lot of Americans. Again, once again, they're, they're sort of paying for the price with their air quality and, and health. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when the president said that, it, it didn't even occur to me that pollution could be an issue. I just thought all that noise, I was thinking of noise pollution because I know for me, when you hear a truck backing up, you know, six blocks away and you're trying to sleep, it's, you know, it wakes you up. So I couldn't imagine the, just the, the noise coming out of uh, the port area, but the pollution is way worse. The, um, so I'm really glad that you did the article and kind of uh, you're bringing attention to this, Justine. Thank you. Thank you so much.